Happy Easter. When I say amen, say alleluia. Amen? When I say alleluia, say amen. Alleluia? Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He is risen as he truly said. Alleluia. We believe as Christians that today is the greatest of all days. It's greater than Christmas. It's greater than New Year's. It's greater than Thanksgiving. It's the best day of the year. Why? Because death has ended. It's greater than Christmas because Christmas is the reality that God became man. Today is the reality that man and God have conquered death. That death is no more. Death is destroyed because a tomb was found empty. A man who died was buried. And three days later, that tomb was empty. The body wasn't stolen because Pilate had stationed guards at the tomb. The tomb was found empty because the power of Christ and his resurrection has changed the world forever. Amen? This is by far the most beautiful thing that we can confess, is that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he is risen from the dead. Hallelujah? So. On this great day of rejoicing, we are called to be people of great hope, people of great joy, because of what God has done in our lives. And this is supposed to radically change us, this belief in Jesus' resurrection. Amen? Now, last night at our parish, All Saints Parish, at the St. Martin campus, we celebrated the Easter Vigil. We had a packed church. And we had three people that were baptized, three people who were baptized in other faith denominations that entered into the Catholic Church. We had three young children that were confirmed, two infants that were baptized, and a wedding. I also celebrated, of course, Holy Mass, and I heard two and a half hours confession. Yesterday, I celebrated five sacraments out of the seven. (laughs) The Easter Vigil last night was awesome. It was also two hours and 37 minutes. You get the short version today. (laughs) Now, we can look at what happened last night and be like, well, that's pretty good. Like, we had three people get baptized and we had three... I just want to make this very clear. Last night was absolutely awesome. Three people were baptized. Three people who did not have Christ in their hearts, that had not become temples of the Holy Spirit, became temples of the Holy Spirit. And that is, by far, the coolest thing in the whole entire world. However, we should be absolutely embarrassed. And last night should smack us in the face and remind us that we are not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Shame on you and shame on me. Because last night, three people were baptized. And that's embarrassing. So, let's talk about some facts. I like facts. Everybody likes facts. I have this piece of paper here. This is put forward by Glen Mary. They are a research center, and they do data. For those of you who like data, you're going to love this. For those of you who like numbers like I do, you're going to love this. This is a report. For the United States of America, this piece of paper says, U.S. County Fast Facts. And then it says, Dearborn County, Indiana. Please raise your hand if you live in Dearborn County. Good. Some of you don't. For those of you who don't, welcome. You're very welcome here in Dearborn County. Okay? If you do live in Dearborn County, please listen to some of the following facts. First fact, population of Dearborn County is 25,740. We are accepting visitors, so we can increase that number right there. The population of Dearborn County is 25,740. Now there's some other statistics on here. Imagine this. The white persons in Dearborn County are 97.3%. African Americans, 0.3%. Hispanics or Latino origin, 1.7%. People that live below the poverty level, 10.8%. Median household, for Dearborn County, $46,894. Now let's get down to the section marked religion. Out of those 25,740, how many are Catholic? 
6,509. Out of the 25,740, 6,509 are Catholic. Now, this is what's interesting. We can, plat, we can pat ourselves in the back and we'd be like, but Father, read down, read down further. Total number of faith groups in Dearborn County, 20. Largest faith group, Roman Catholics. We are so awesome because we are the largest group of faithful people in Dearborn County. Our 6,509 is awesome. We are so good. We've been here since the beginning. We're fantastic. Well, you want to know what? It's embarrassing. Because you want to know what's embarrassing? The fact that 42% of people that live in Dearborn County have no church whatsoever. 42% of people who live in Dearborn County this morning wake up and all they have is the Easter Bunny. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing that there are 6,509 Catholics that live in Dearborn County and 42% of our county is unbaptized, unchurched, and does not believe in God. They're facts. We can't change facts. This is what it is. So the question is this. Do we really believe? Do we really believe? And if we do believe, what are we doing about it? Raise your hand if you want to go to heaven. Raise your hand if you want to go to hell. I always just like to check. <laughs> what is the only way you're going to get to heaven? Jesus Christ. Raise your hand if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Raise your hand if you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven. There are 42% of the people that live in our county who don't know that. And if they do know that, it hasn't been told them convincingly that they should actually believe that. And let's be very honest, of course, it says on the books that 6,509 of us in Dearborn County are Catholic. And yet how many of that 6,509 actually believe what we believe? I mean, we all know that many of you are here this morning and we love you. I look forward to this Sunday all year round because I get to see some of you. Eh? How's it been since Christmas? I ask my people here that are here every single Sunday, do they really believe? Do you really believe? Because you're not here every Sunday. Do we believe that this man died, was crucified, and rose from the grave? Do we believe that? If we believe that, then we should be out there sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. Our faith cannot be something private. It never has been for 2,000 years. And yet we've turned it into something, well, I don't talk about my faith with other people. That's not Christian, and it's definitely not Catholic. But Father, I mean, I'm not just not comfortable with that. Then get over it. 42% of our county, not our state, not our nation, not our world, your next door neighbors don't believe. And what are we doing about it? This morning I want to ask three things for us who believe. First is this, we have to be people of prayer. I pray almost at every single daily mass for people that do not believe and people who have fallen away. And I ask of you to join with me. If you can come to daily mass and pray for them, that's the best thing you could possibly do. But we have to start praying every single day for the conversion of those who do not believe. Because here's the deal. Do you love your neighbor? Do you love your coworker? Do you love your boss? Do you love the person that works at Skyline? Because if they don't go to church and you aren't praying for their souls, you don't really love them. Because you don't desire their ultimate good, which is heaven. We have to become fervent people of prayer, praying for the conversion of ourselves, particularly if we don't believe and we're not here every single Sunday, we need to pray for ourselves first. We also need to be praying that other people come to know and love the Lord. Secondly is this, we have got to study our faith. 
When people ask us questions about our faith, and let's be honest, we get asked questions. Do we have an answer? It's proven fact, you can look this up, but data now says that in the year 2015, with the way that people have been trained through social media and through the internet and through news, that they will turn you off in less than 20 seconds. So when someone asks you something about your faith, and if you cannot answer them convincingly in, in, in less than 20 seconds, you're turned off and they're done. So just right now, if, if, if someone came up to you and said, hey, why do you Catholics worship statue? Why do you use Catholics worship Mary? Which we don't do either of. Why do you Catholics have a Pope? Why do you believe indulgences? Why do you believe in purgatory? Why do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Why do you believe that Jesus Christ is able to forgive your sins? Why do you go to confession? Why do you have the sacraments? If you can't answer that within 20 seconds convincingly, we failed. Step one is prayer. Step two is study. We have got to know our faith more convincingly and be able to talk about it and share it. It's something that we're weak at, and it has to begin to well up out of us. Our parish has been offerings this past year. It's awesome, more than just this past year. But continuously, adult Bible studies and adult education classes. Are you engaged? Are you a part of that? Do you know your faith? It's more important than sports, television. It's more important than anything than the first one being prayer. Prayer, study. Number three is joy. I talk to a lot of people who leave the church, who don't go to church. You guys have seen me in your bars. That's where I meet these people. I work at East Central High School. That's where I see them every day. If you ask people that don't go to church why they don't go, the majority of them will tell you they don't go because someone was mean to them. A priest, a religious sister, a CCD teacher, a secretary, an usher, a sacristan, Eucharistic minister, a lector. It could be anybody. It could be the person that serves them a beer. Sorry, I just spit on you. A beer. <laughs> and the sprinkling right now hasn't even started yet. And a beer at the parish festival. The third thing that we need to be doing is living lives of joy. Raise your hand if you believe in the resurrection of the dead. If you believe in the resurrection, then we should, we should constantly be joyful. But Father, life is hard. Nothing should take away our joy. Even in the midst of sorrow, we should have joy because there's resurrection at the end. We should be people who have joy. Not fake joy, but true joy. Because we believe in something that's bigger than all of our problems, which is God. We should live a witness of love and joy in our world. People are, all the more, in the year 2015, are begging for someone who will show them faith. It's not about proving doctrines. It's not about winning arguments. It's about showing love and joy. It's the greatest thing we have, is our witness of love and joy in our world. I beg of you, on this Easter Sunday to stand with me in being moved by God and moved by the Holy Spirit to realize that there are 42% of our brothers and sisters who do not have hope, who do not have hope in eternal life and that we are responsible for that. We are called to do something about that. In a few moments, we're going to stand up and we're going to profess our faith. Last night, three people for the first time in their lives stood and rejected Satan and professed their faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and were baptized. It was the first time they ever did that. This morning, many of you are going to stand, and this is going to be your 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. It's time doing this. Don't allow the words today just to go through your lips. Have them come out of your heart. I do believe, I do believe, I do believe. And then pray, study, and joy. Pray, study, and joy. Our world is hungry and longing for a savior. Let's pray this morning that through prayer, study, and joy, 
We will be authentic witnesses and instruments of change in a world longing for a Savior. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.